Hey everybody, I'm Chuck. This is Jason. Unfortunately, Teaser is still out for a walk <laughs> this weekend, but he was barking a lot last weekend. Anyway, we're here for uh, another segment of Bookends. We're at the Red Rock Racing Sportsbook. A little of the calm before the storm, Jay. Uh, we know it was crazy this past weekend. We know what it's going to be like uh, for the championship two games, but my blood pressure is just starting to go down. I mean, we've heard in baseball the walk-off home run. We had the walk-off field goal, the walk-off overtime touchdown. It was just crazy football. Arguably one of the most exciting weekends that I can remember ever uh, in pro football. Yeah, the divisional playoffs, I, I think we talked about wild card weekend. We saw a couple of the blowouts, and the wild card weekend wasn't all that great. Um, and boy, did we come out of the box uh, last weekend. Uh, incredible games. Three walk-off field goal games, and then the walk-off uh, overtime touchdown by Kelsey and the Chiefs. So um, it's going to be tough to match uh, the performances this week, but uh, the betters did uh, somewhat a mixed uh, mixed feelings last week. The, the upsets by the Bengals and um, 49ers. 49ers right. beat, knocking off the number one seeds were really, really good for the books. However, the, the betters came back and bet the Rams really heavy on Sunday. So a lot of betters cashed on the Rams. And then a, a kind of a mixed bag. We had a lot of Chiefs money, a lot of Bills money. A lot of the people out there, if they would have had all four dogs, right. if the Bills would have been able to come in, cash that four-team underdog parlay, which was somewhere in that 30-1 to 1 payoff range of all four dogs. There were a lot of people, a lot of people had that, looking though, for the right. Bills to, yeah. to close out right. that final game. That was so exciting, though. I mean, we, we know we had some big bets come in on the under in the second half of that Bills-Chiefs game, and with about a minute and 48 seconds to go, it looked like it was going to cash. Not only did it not cash, it went over by three touchdowns. You had uh, 25 points scored in the last two minutes. Um, you know, if Buffalo just squibs that kick, I think we're having a different narrative right now about them playing in the championship game, but it was just crazy football. I mean, the emotions I know for us – and the crowd was with the oohing and on, depending on who you had. It was so loud. It really was a, a fun place to be this past Sunday. I'm looking forward to this week's games. Let's jump uh, right into it. Okay. Them. All right, so let, let's start with um, AFC. So you've got Bengals, Chiefs. These two teams played each other late in the season. Uh, Bengals won that game, 34-31. We posted the total on that game, the, the new one, at, at 50 and a half, 51 better said are you guys crazy we just watched the chiefs and the bills go way over we watched these two teams go way over they bet it up right it went up three four points just like that uh you've got joe burrow jamar chase they had that big game against kansas city they were aided by a lot of penalties in that game but the chiefs were out to a big lead before they came roaring back i think if you like offense and you like points this afc game is the game for you yeah total went all the way up as high as 55 it's come down to 54 staying in that 54 and a half 55 range um the key for me in this game is What's the, what's the balance and how does Kansas City get that defensive secondary back in shape? We saw uh, the Buffalo Bills and Gabriel Davis have a career day uh, picking off that secondary. Well, Jamar Chase had a career yeah, and day. If they, if they don't find a way to fix it, Chase is going to do the same thing. He was uh, 11 for 266 in the meeting um, in Week 17. Burrow threw for 446 and four touchdowns. Um, so the Kansas City's got a way to find a way to fix that. And they could get in, in, in another shootout in this game. I mean, Mahomes should be able to go up and down the field on this Bengals defense. Right. Bengals defense still still um, you know, uh, played a solid game against Tennessee. They, they were very much gifted the win against uh, the Titans with Ryan Tannehill's three interceptions. Um, the Titans were able to move the ball up and down the field. A.J. Brown had a couple really big receptions. Derrick Henry had a solid running game in his first game back. Uh, but, but that defense was able to stand up. Um, uh, Ozama, um, ok Okaboji is the, the defensive tackle that's out for the Bengals. I still think a big deal in this game is not going to be just Patrick Mahomes and Kelsey and Hill. It's going to be Cincinnati's ability to stop the run. In that Week 17 matchup, the Chiefs didn't have McKinnon or McKinnon didn't play, and they didn't have uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire as well. They played Williams, who ran for 88 yards. Um, we also saw Gore have 37 yards in that game. I think we're going to see the key to this game is the Chiefs with Hilaire and McKinnon. If they're able to run the football, control that ground game, control the ball, not give Burrow a ton of time um, with the football, and see if they can exploit that Cincinnati defensive line. I think both teams don't want to run the ball. I mean, when you look at maybe who's the best running back left in the playoffs, you can make a case that it's Joe Mixon for Cincinnati right now. I think if you're Cincinnati, you know how explosive Kansas City is. You saw them come back three times late in that game against Buffalo. Don't you want to run the ball, control clock? I know everyone looks at this game and says, hey, they played like a month ago, 65 points were scored. We just watched the Chiefs and Bills. A ton of points were scored. These two teams, it's offense they're going to score, but you want to really play keep away to some degree. Well, I think that, that Cincinnati's going to look, look to exploit the matchups that they can exploit. In that Week right. 17 matchup, Mixon only ran for 46 yards. Some of that was the game pace of the game. Right. They went down 14 to nothing early and had to chase themselves all the way back. 
literally chase themselves all the way back. Um, he had a 72-yard touchdown reception, an 18-yard touchdown reception, and a 69-yard touchdown reception. So if they can't find a way to cover Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow is going to continue to go back to him. And he's got other weapons. The Chiefs can roll over coverage onto Chase, and then he's going to find a way to find Higgins or Boyd. find Boyd or find Uzama. So the, the Bills um, found those holes in that, in that Kansas City secondary. The Cincinnati Bengals have that same type of offense to take a player and exploit whatever hole that Cincinnati or the they've Kansas already City done it. So I'm not going to steal it because I know it was yours. But <laughs> what, what would you call the Bengals this week? Well, the the Bengals run not only their regular season run and what they did in the regular season to get into the playoffs, but now these two wins in the playoffs. Um, I've dubbed the <laughs> Cincinnati Bengals the Cinderella Bengals. I and so love if, it. If they can pull off an upset here, um, that might be the line for the next two weeks as we look at them in potentially that Super Bowl matchup. I think you look at the Bengals, too, the last six times that they've been three three point dogs or more, they're 6 and 0. So this is a team right now, you know, that hadn't won a playoff game in 31 years. They're one game away from playing on Super Bowl Sunday, February 13th. They're, they can come in, I think, a little bit relaxed. They've beaten this team once. They know they can score. Um, I love the young quarterbacks in the league, and Burroughs played great. Uh, right now, Kansas City's around a touchdown favorite. I'm not sure if it goes either way or if, or if this game just kind of stays around that number. Yeah, I think if we're going to continue to see public money on the Chiefs, um, and, and we'll see if it's enough to push it up to that 7.5 right. number. Um, I expect that we're going to still see money on the over, um, so that number may continue to inch back up on the total as you look at these two dynamic offenses. I think if the number does get pushed up, I could see the, the Sharps coming in and kind of grabbing that 7.5, just thinking these two teams are, are two big offensive teams. They score a lot of points. They've already played once with a really close game. Um, and and I, I, I know it's the Chiefs. I know they've made two straight trips to the Super Bowl. This would be three in a row. But, God, you think about that game against Buffalo and the way they came back and won with 13 seconds to go. They didn't even need the 13 seconds. They kicked that field goal with three seconds left. They got in field goal range in 10 seconds. But how do you get back up from a game like that? Oh, I, don't th- I think when you're talking about the playoffs, I don't think you have that lull. I think when you talk about the regular season of, hey, it's a big game and now it's tough to get back up for that next week. We're two weeks away from talking about playing in the championship. I don't think the motivation for any of these four teams, uh, I don't think they needed anything more to motivation. I know there's a lot of storylines and that type of stuff, but you're about to go to the NFL championship. There, There's no extra motivation needed. I know the two teams in the AFC, whoever happens to get there and is playing on Big Game Sunday from a prop side of it and the way the weapons they have on offense is going to be crazy fun. Oh, I don't even think you have to wait till the Pro Football Championship game to talk about props. I'll, I'll pull up my phone right now. <laughs> Get on the STN Sports app. Of course, I put in my wrong password because I'm trying to rush. On the app right now, in our prop, Pro Football, first halves, quarters, player to score the first touchdown, special point spreads, team totals, alternative totals, team to score first, first score of the game, quarterback props, rushing props, receiving props, TD score props, group props, defensive touchdown, safety props, overtime props, two-point conversion props, Pro Football Early Championship, Pro Football Draft, and Pro right. Football Futures. I'm going to interrupt you now. Get on the app get, and find the props. Get signed up now. <laughs> it's going to be crazy the next few weeks. Get signed up for SDN Sports. This is your last week to go ahead and get the cap. So $100, up to a $100 bonus. Got the cap for a $50 deposit. We love when you guys come in and enjoy everything we have to offer here. But get signed up. I mean, there's going to be every prop that you see on the board in our sports books and every packet that you see out, you're going to have on SDN Sports. So get signed up. All right, now we're going to go to the NFC. Now, really contrasting styles. I think when you look at at the Rams and the 49ers, they played twice this year. Niners won both those games. They've actually won six straight games. So is Shanahan a little bit in Sean McVay's head? Um, But I think you look at these two teams, it's way more. Hit you in the mouth, smash mouth football, defensive, physical, so much different than the wide open style of those two teams in the AFC. And as I mentioned again, six straight wins for San Francisco against the Rams. They came back in that game week 18. They were trailing 17-3, to came back and won that game. If the Rams take care of business that day, they're not having to play the San Francisco team right now. It's a Frisco team that has an attitude. Uh, they were 2-4 and four at one point. They were up to 200-1 to one on our future book aboard. So there's a few guests right now that are smiling with that price. 
priced at 200 to 1. We might not be, but they are. Um, but I think it's a much different game than what we're going to see in the AFC. Yeah, and you talk about looking at just from a sheer total standpoint where we're talking about the AFC game having a total in that 55 range. This game's got a total of 46, so almost a full touchdown lower. Um, talk about this Niner team. It's really a team that's evolved throughout the season. You talk about the the hot 2-0 and start, and then they lose four straight to go 2-4, and four, and um, trying to figure themselves out at running back where we saw most. It doesn't matter who runs for start, them. Mostert right. starts the year. They then go to Trey Sermon. Um, that doesn't work. We see Jeff Wilson in the mix, Elijah Mitchell in the mix, and then somewhere in that midseason they figured out Debo Samuel can work as a running back, and the two-headed monster of Samuel and, and Mitchell has been absolutely fantastic. In the two games that they've played against the Rams this year, they've rushed the ball 75 times for 291 yards. So running the ball against the Rams has absolutely been the key for them. You talked about that. They beat them six consecutive times, and they've beaten them four of those six times in this same situation as the underdog, same situation that they're facing this week. You know, the Rams, too, I think over the last six weeks of the, of the season, they ran the ball 59% of the time, which was the fourth highest in the league. So we talk about Cincinnati and Kansas City and the wide-open style and the offense. These two teams really are going to look to run the ball a lot more. Um, they have a lot of history between these two teams. It's fun fun to watch because you look at Jimmy G and everyone says, you know, I'm not sold that he can win the big game. But when you look at an NFL history, a quarterback with at least 25 starts, he has the second highest winning percentage on the road. He may not have any postseason touchdowns, but they're 2-0. and They beat Dak Prescott, they beat Aaron Rodgers, and they're one game away from playing in February uh, in SoFi Stadium. So they win kind of ugly and old school. And as you touched on, it doesn't matter who's running the ball. I think the one thing for San Francisco is they know who they are. They know that they can win ugly. It doesn't matter if it's Kittle, Ayuk, Samuel, whoever steps up in that game, and that defense is awfully good. Yeah, talk about winning ugly. That's what they had to do in Green Bay last week. Um, uh, you know, the, the special teams has really won, won the game for them. You talk about that running game. The other thing is they don't have to just win with the running game. We saw the game where they fell down 17 points in, in that week 18. They do have the weapons on the outside, whether it's Samuel catching the ball, but also you talk about Ayuk, you talk about Kittle, you talk about Jennings was a big part of that win. He had the two touchdowns in the comeback win in week 18. So they do have those guys that if the running game is not what's working, they can find holes elsewhere um, to kind of go against that Ram defense. Jalen Ramsey, we're going to see what he kind of, how he's used um, to match up against Samuel, to match up against Ayuk, and how they manipulate that. And the other you know, side of this is what the Rams want to do. And you know, we talk about, um, I, I've been talking about for weeks how the Rams are, to me, are the Super Bowl or bus team more than Absolutely. anybody else in that you acquire Stafford, you acquire Odell Beckham Jr., you go out and get Von Miller, you brought all these pieces. Ramsey, of the, too, they did the same thing. They brought all these pieces of the puzzle for, right. for this scenario. And if you win this game, you get to play the big game in your home stadium, much like we saw the Tampa Bay Bucks last year. Um, but again, they've got the offensive weapons as well. We talk about the receivers in Cup and Beckham and Van Jefferson, and uh, I do believe Tyler Higby is going to be a big part of this game. San Francisco does like to play a lot of zone defense, um, so look for Higby and Stafford to hook up and, and breaking down those zones. But again, it's the same scenario on the running back side where we saw Daryl Henderson was really the guy that led the Rams through the beginning of the right. year after after Cam Akers got hurt in the preseason. And then when Henderson got hurt, it was Sony Michelle that kind of took the lead in the back. And now Cam Akers is back, kind of surprisingly, and he takes that lead role. He had a little bit of fumbleitis last week in Tampa that hopefully he's going to have to get over that mentally this week because we know the Niners are going to be in there trying to strip every ball that he tries to, to run with. Right. Uh, but again, I think the running game here is another big, big deal. You bring up a really interesting point. You talked about if the Rams win, they get to play the big game in their home stadium. I, I listened to an interview with Jimmy Garoppolo yesterday, and he, he talked about that meeting week 18. He said, when we came out of the tunnel, he said, we thought we were playing a home game. He said, we saw more red in the stands than we did blue and gold. He said it was unbelievable. I know that the, the Rams have said, you know, season ticket holders, don't sell your tickets. But it was amazing to see how San Francisco's fans travel. I wonder what an impact that will have this week. Will we see something similar again where there is a lot of red and gold throughout the stands um, where San Francisco doesn't have that kind of home bias they're up against in L.A.? I don't think San Francisco cares <laughs> where, where they're playing. They're, this is their fourth yeah, straight road they, game. They, they've been, fourth straight. They've been road warriors. Yep. Um, they're, they're, this team, obviously, be, by beating them six in a row, they really don't care where where they're at playing against this team I, I do think one thing that we talk about 
about special teams. Talk about the offenses, talk about the defenses. Um, special teams doesn't get enough talk, and um, we saw what the special teams right. for the Niners was able to do last week in Green Bay. And Robbie Gold, um, we keep watching these playoff games. He's perfect in the playoffs. He has not missed an extra point. He has not missed a Who field goal. Who did he used to kick for? In the playoffs. <laughs> so we won't bring up Bears. Um, but, you know, if it comes down to that, you know, uh, Matt Gay has missed a couple of kicks here and there. Robbie Gold's been solid. So does the kicking game or the special teams come down again to uh, seeing who, who advances in this game? Hey, it's going to be fun. No matter how it kind of works out and shakes out, it's going to be fun. As Jay mentioned, there's a, a lot of props already on the board for, for Big Game Sunday. Do you want me to go through them again for you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to because all you have to do is download the app, get signed up, and all the props are right there. As much as I'd love to talk about it, we could talk about it for an hour. We could break those down but just get the app and all the props are on there right now we can't wait we're going to have a whole segment kind of dedicated to the props we've got a lot of cool and fun ones some new ones we're going to be talking about so don't forget get signed up for SDN sports up to hundred dollar bonus last week to win the cap and enjoy the two uh, championship games this week because as soon as those games are over we'll be posting who's going to be playing november or february 13th in sofi stadium He's Jason. I'm Chucky. I promise you, Teaser will be back for the Super Bowl segment, you guys. Good luck this weekend, and we'll see you next week on Bookends.